Hi there folks and welcome to another instalment of Gran Turismo Sport, this time it's Daily Race C at Laguna Seca Group 3 um, and this was the first race I had done for the week on this particular track. Um, you can see from the title of the, the video it wasn't uh, going to be the particularly good race. I had qualified in P2 um, for the time. Um, of one to one point seven, I believe, and it was a it was a tough lobby. It was full of A and A plus drivers, um, and again, it was really just a case of jumping on, not a lot of practice, other than quality laps, following a ghost, and this really does show the importance of practicing without a ghost because when you've dogged the ghost in front of you, sometimes the actual track can feel a lot different, and obviously in the race will be the tyre we're going to take into account. So on lap 1 you'll see I am being closely followed by Diglett in P3 um, and you can just tell that I am rusty. Um, as you see I dip a couple of tyres onto the sand here that gives Diglett the run all the way up the hill and you'll see I completely miss my breaking point, make contact and off I go into the gravel. Now doing that on turn 1 is absolutely well, it just, it's a race killer, because look how many cars go past. We're now down to P10 from P2 in the, in the space of three quarters of a lap. So all hopes of a, a good finish are really gone now. Um, and I'm just you know, thinking about damage limitation. Nobody to blame other than myself at this point, though. Uh, it was just a very, very rusty first lap. You know, it's a very unforgiving track. If you dip a couple of tyres onto the sand, then you will be punished for it, especially in these sort of lobbies. But as we can see, going back into lap two, we kind of go deep again, and it's just giving people behind us a chance to put a lot of pressure on us. And to be honest with you, I wasn't coping with the pressure of this race particularly well. Again, a little bit wide there. See, we've got a bit of pressure behind us. And I think probably the problem was that starting P2, I kind of was a bit surprised by that. I didn't expect to start P2. And all of a sudden, you know, the guys behind were just quicker than me. I don't know if it had been they'd done more races or whatever, but my race pace just was not good. So I was constantly on the back foot in this race. And to be honest with you, I absolutely let myself down on a number of levels. As the race unfolds, you will see why that is the case. So we managed to negotiate safely, relatively safely, um, the second lap. We managed to you know, make a make a little bit of a gap between ourselves and P11. So I'm thinking, let's let's knuckle down. Maybe we can get back into this race. P9 um, is coming back to us a little bit, and yeah, I mean, wasn't the worst second lap, uh, uh, you know, a more one, two, four. So I'm thinking to myself, we've got maybe a chance to do something after all, maybe get into the top five, that kind of thing. But it just wasn't uh, wasn't a race I was ever completely comfortable with. So you're always on the limit with this track. As you can see, you're always having to use the kerbs. And if you don't catch the kerbs to help the car rotate and you end up in the sand, then it's game over in terms of Know, putting in strong race um, and other people seem to have been able to negotiate this better than me see a yellow flag there with Mega Verotto the Italian he has just absolutely wiped out um, and that's how easily it can be done but as you see you know I went wide there and gave up my position so I'll be honest with you by this point I'm now starting to get super frustrated because I'm just so annoyed that the race has went so badly in the space of three laps. I'm already now under pressure from the guy behind in the Vantage, the Spaniard, and you know, I'm thinking so well, I've qualified in P2, I should have enough pace to keep up with the cars in front, certainly make a bit of inroads into the top half of the, the race, but yeah, it just, just felt like I was going backwards now. So as we head into the beginning of P, uh, lap 4, heading down to uh, turn 1, again, just trying to hit my breaking point, a little bit better this time, 
keeping the red out in front of us in our sights, trying to get into the slipstream, but the Aston Martin's all over the back of me, as you can see, I feel like I'm holding them up, and it kind of forces me into going over the sausage curve, it's completely my mistake, just pressure, and, you know, we make that error. We try and get a, a good exit from this corner, but we've got the fin now coming up on the inside of us, and as we go out this corner, we just get tapped, and it just knocks me out. You know, I felt at the time that was a, a bit of a sort of overly aggressive move. We'll, we'll look at it from his point of view. You know, he's got a good run on down the inside. I don't know if he gives me a lot of space here. He doesn't seem to turn in very early. And as you can see, I'm flashing my lights at him coming up the hill because I'm absolutely fuming. Now, it's partly because of the mistakes I was making in the race that made me so angry at this point. But when I when I got what I felt, you know, squeezed out the corner, I started to to see a, a shade of red, and then I get a one second penalty for I do not know what. I'm assuming it was contact with the fin going through the corkscrew, although I, I never felt anything. But that just added to it, and what we see here is just an absolute lunge by me, you know, hands up. I'm not going to try and make any any sort of claims that you know it was an accident. I, I just lost it and I just went for the lunch. You know that was all I can say about it. And it was an it was a dreadful move. Uh, I absolutely let myself down in that respect there. And the fin, he loses what one, two, two possibly three places because of it. But to be honest with you, at this point of the race, I I, I didn't care. I, I was still seeing red. I had cost myself a number of places just from poor driving and catching the sand. And then when I got tapped, I mean, look at that, good old sausage again. It's just so untidy, giving everybody the chance to close in. I mean, I felt like every corner I was doing that, every corner was just on the limit and making a really, really difficult race for myself. So as we ghost out there to let everybody back through, we can see the fin going back through again. And we can see one of the top split drivers, Derek, 737 on our right hand side. And we know he's quick, so back out. It wasn't going to ruin his race as well. But now we're down to P14 from P2, remember. This started off such a, a promising race, but yeah, it's just not going to happen. And then I make an absolute mess of the course crew, so. You might be thinking to yourself, what else can go wrong in this race? Well, I'm thinking not a lot else can go wrong because everything that seems to be able to go wrong is going wrong. So I'm now almost dead last. And that's, to be pretty frank, pretty embarrassing. Um, it's what I'm thinking to myself. I think, why did I even bother with this race? Because you start to doubt your own ability when you have a race like this. I think everybody will agree we've been in situations where I've qualified well. And then the race pace is just so far off, and the mistakes are making. Nobody else seems to be making these mistakes, and you just think to yourself, ah, "Am I even any good at this game? What's the point?" Um, that is exactly how I felt at this point. So we're 16th now. Somebody's rage quit by the looks of it. I'm not sure who, but we've got the pole in 15th ahead of us now, and that's where we are having to set our sights on. And we're races like this happen, sometimes I just think to myself, right, just focus on the gap in the, to the car in front, see if we can make any inroads, try and get a bit of respectability. So we'll skip through until we get up to the back of the pole, we're catching them quite well, we can see there's been another spinner here, so we might pick up another position, and indeed we do, it's Spaniard, that Renault was very, very difficult, it was a good car for qualifying, but a very difficult car in the race, so you can see the Spaniard, he's now pitted, and I think that's in the same race over. So here we are, we've got a run now on the pole, we're finally caught up with um, him and go down the straight into T1 and I mean he just tried to ram me off the track as far as I could see there which again just added to the utter rage I was now feeling. So yeah, that was not helpful from that point of view. So skip forward, um, we can see that there's not a lot happening up ahead, we're just trying to see if we can catch anybody and not make a complete mess of things as we have been doing. Um, so we get here and we see the fin is now spinning around 
and yeah, at this point I actually thought to myself, because I never actually seen him spinning, I came around this corner and I just seen the yellow flag was out, and I thought, I actually thought to myself for a moment, is he waiting on me to take me out? <laughs> That's actually what went through my mind, but it clearly wasn't, it just spun. I completely outbreak myself here, or, or I thought I had, and indeed I did, and <laughs> managed to somehow take him out again. Now, I did feel terrible at this point, so I did decide to just let him back through, um, because I destroyed his race. Yeah, his race was not going that well either, let's be honest, but I kind of wasted it twice for him, so there's a friend, the pole, getting through. So uh, I didn't want really to let him finish ahead of us, to be fair, so I just decided I would carry on resist the rage quit and as you can see he's going to serve his penalty we're going to get through and you know, we can then just focus on not ruining the Finns race for a third time and that's how the race kind of panned out um, you know another spinner in the Renault let's just catch up with him Finn gets through and uh, we get through I think we get th got through in this corner here, I'll just go back to see, yeah, he's really struggling with his tyres, so you can see why we got through, but yeah, skipping forward now, heading towards the end of the race, and, you know, it was a difficult race to upload because of how badly it went, and all the sort of shenanigans that went on, and how disappointing I was, disappointing I was with my driving, the lunge, etc, so, yeah, we've all been there, and I think it was a good race to upload, just it lets us all just think to ourselves, yeah, we've all we've all had that race where we just feel that we can't do anything right. But hopefully that will just be a one-off, few and far between going forward. But that brings us to the end of the race. And I just want to say thanks to everybody who has subscribed to the channel thus far. And if anybody hasn't subscribed already, then please do so. It would help me so much because at the moment, I'm trying to convince my wife to let me buy a decent laptop, uh, PC so I can you know properly stream you might see in my channel some live streams so some um, stream labs etc would be great for doing that and a decent webcam all that kind of stuff so it would really really help me if you subscribed and then I could convince her that this was worthwhile spending my my time doing but again thanks very much uh, hit that subscribe hit that like that would be much appreciated so until the next video over and out